Heidi here from Rand Country Homestead. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be showing you how I ferment just basic veggies of any kind and fruits as well. But today I'm doing vegetables. So I want to show you what I started a few days ago and that is um, a batch of red cabbage, carrots, and onions. And this is just very simple. I didn't spice it up fancy and a few days ago I started this and now it's all fuzzy and fizzy and ready to go into the fridge and so I don't know if you can hear that very very fizzy smells smells really good I never actually fermented red cabbage before and um, my son's girlfriend decided to get into making him kimchi and she decided to try it with red cabbage and it turned out beautiful. So I thought, I know that red cabbage turns everything purple, but I still wanted to do that. So mostly it was about fermenting the carrots, but I just felt like throwing the red cabbage in there for fun. So it just really made a beautiful color. But before I get started on the fermenting of the vegetables, I want to show you what else I have going on today. Cause as usual, I have a lot and my counter is piled with stuff for that purpose. So in this bowl right here, I have thawing out some homegrown grated zucchini from this last summer and some grass-fed ground beef. And I'm going to be making my beef vegetable fritters. And you can find a video to how I do that right up here. Okay, so there's that. And then over here, I have most of my soap making supplies out because I need to get another batch of soap made. And I really liked the, the way my peppermint tea uh, soap turned out last time. In fact, I want to show you what it looks like. So there's the, the last time I made it. That's how it looks. And so what I did, I, I used uh, my Now Foods peppermint oil in it. And um, my, this isn't just peppermint, but this, this is peppermint and a whole bunch of other mints, plus a whole bunch of other garden um, herbs. And this is my special tea blend that I use. It's just my, you know, it's got dandelion leaves and um, some lemon balm and all, just all kinds of good stuff in here. And so we use, we drink that all through the year. I have a whole bunch of jars of that jarred up. But you'll see also that I have, I want to make sure I point this out because you, I'm, <laughs> this is my new safety measure. And this is just a, a piece of cloth. I'll be wrapping over my face. I'm going to be doing this from now on whenever I make soap because if you see my, you know, watch my last soap video about the important safety tips, um, I explain why I started implementing that besides just the goggles and the rubber gloves. So you want to make sure when you make soap you really protect yourself. So I want, I'm not going to stop mentioning this, the importance of wearing a cloth over your face. So if you if you see my most recent one, which will probably be up before this one, this video, my most recent soap making video, um, it doesn't show me wearing the cloth mask. Actually, none of them do because um, I don't have any videos out yet of me showing how to make soap wearing the cloth over my face. So just keep that in mind that I've learned a lesson and I will from now on be doing that extra safety precaution. Okay, so on to this. This is super easy. Um, I have I have a couple other videos out about fermenting vegetables. One is my lacto-fermented um, pickles. Uh, it's just one way to make pickles. And also my kimchi. And so I will link to both of those videos up here and or at the end of this video. And also to my fermentation starter, which you will see right here, because this right here is the key to the way I ferment vegetables. It's not the traditional way of making kimchi and other stuff where you use the salt brine and all that. This is just a faster method to get it going, and I really like it. It's very simple. Once you have this, it'll keep for a very long time as long as you remember to feed it. You got to feed it. A little sugar once every week or so or every time you pull it out to use it and I'll show you how I do that I actually made this last summer and I, that this is the one I made in that video and I'll link to that video right here on how to make your fermentation starter and since then I have added some ginger bits to it 
and I will get to that in a minute explaining that so I'm just gonna do some more of this and I also I wanted to wait until this was ready so I could show you both the finished product and how I make it so I'll get to chopping up these vegetables and I'll speed the rest of this up and then I'll show you how I put this in the jar Now that I have my vegetables all chopped up, I'm going to start putting these into the jar and I want you to see how that's done. Just very simple and it makes it look real pretty. Okay, about the halfway point, I like to stop and put a little bit of salt in there, about a teaspoon. And I did spice these ones over here up, but I'm going to go ahead and add some red pepper flakes, a couple tablespoons. Okay, and now I'm going to continue on. Okay, next I'm going to take my fermentation starter. I'm going to need a quarter cup of this, at least. I don't care if I get a few berry pieces in there. A lot of times I like to throw just a little bit more. That really gets things going. And then what I, you need to do is once you've got that, you've used that, you want to top it off with some more water because I don't know if I go over this in, my, in that fermentation starter video and some sugar. Anytime you use it, you want to do that. You can also continue to add more fruit. The blackberries that are in here are actually the same berries that were in here when I started it last summer, and it's still good. They still last for a very, very long time, as long as you keep feeding it. Got some filtered rainwater here. That's what I'm using. Filtered with Berkey filters, and I'll link to the Berkey filters below. Where I buy them at Amazon is the best price I've seen. And I just top that off. All right, now all I do is take a regular canning lid and stick that on there. I'm gonna screw this on kind of tight to start with and I wanna shake this up. I like to periodically come through and shake these things up. And as you can see, I have a bunch of cabbage left here and some carrots. So I'm gonna cut up some more onion and I'm gonna get another batch going. This will take on a little bit different color than this because I added the red pepper. But either way, you can see the difference in, after a few days, the color the cabbage makes to everything in there. So these, I'm going to be putting in the fridge. And I'll set the next two jars out there to ferment. So there you have it. It really is that easy to ferment fruits and vegetables using your fermentation starter. So once you have this going, which takes about three to five days, then you can just keep using that again and again and again and ferment all kinds of stuff using doing it that way so and and have it done quick and easy and but it's it's really a matter of choice if you prefer using the brine method and i used to do that with my kimchi i used to brine it and you know pull all the liquid out of the um, cabbages and all that kind of stuff and this way to me is just simpler and um and you're still getting those good probiotics and it's it's fast so if you're out of kimchi or fermented vegetables and you're in a hurry then you just yeah you can do this and have it in a in pretty short order all right so i hope you like this video and that you learned something new and don't forget to check out my other videos on fermentation the lacto fermented pickles the kimchi and of course how to make your own fermentation starter thanks for watching Take care and God bless.